Hey guys, welcome back to 11 Cups. So in case you missed the previous video, I'm in the process of testing out four separate uh, sort of budget-friendly kettles uh, as a replacement for anybody who's looking for the fellow EKG. I'm testing these kettles over the next four weeks and at the end of everything, I'm going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison and they will all be benchmarked pretty much against the fellow EKG. So without further ado, this is kettle of this week. Number two, the J-O-C-U-U, -U, I guess, Jacu? Anyways, <laughs> let's get this started. All right, so the way that Amazon shipped this particular package isn't a way that I like in particular, just because they did one of those things where they shipped it in the original container. Uh, obviously I took off the address label, but the container itself is not sealed in any way. And during shipping, the package is damaged. Uh, hopefully the kettle itself is not. Sometimes Amazon just like to ship boxes in this way. I, I don't know, sometimes I guess with the bigger items, I might not mind, but with something like this, I really wish that they would have just packed it in a separate packaging. Nonetheless, let's get this opened. Uh, right away, I don't know why there is a Victoria's Secret birthday reward in here. <laughs> All right, hopefully this kettle is not used. Okay, so right in the box, very, very simple. Um, as compared to the overware from last week, I think this packaging is much more simpler. Of course, you do have the instruction manual, 1000 watts, 0.8 liters. Again, all four of these kettles are more or less the same specs. Uh, I'm trying to get you know around the same volume, same kind of uh, power, just in case if that's what you guys are looking for. And of course, it does have the temperature setting mode as well as the temperature hold mode. Obviously, that's something that you want if you are shopping for something like the EKG. Now, this particular kettle have a decent looking stand in the Amazon pictures, uh, the product pictures, but having it in the hand, it definitely feels a lot cheaper build. The entire stand just feels very, very plasticky. It's actually a little bit light, it, but overall the buttons as well as just the finish just feels very sort of cheap and plasticky. This is just a observation on the exterior of the item. Doesn't mean that this stand is not good. It's just something that you definitely notice right off the box. Let's see if there's anything else inside the box. Doesn't look like there is anything. There is a little one year extra warranty product card. But besides that, the box is pretty much empty. All right, so let's move this out of the way. Nothing too much to unbox with this particular kettle. Let me go ahead and remove the plastic wrap. Of course, remove this little plastic protector on the spout. All right, so here's the kettle. I've got to say, just like with the stand, the kettle itself actually feels quite light. This is definitely one of the lighter kettles that I have used. Overall, the build quality is just seems very, very simple. I think the best way to describe what this kettle feels like in the hand, the best comparison I can think of right off the top of my head is that this kettle definitely feels like one of those kettles that you find uh, in hotels. The handle itself is very plasticky, although it is, nicely finished. Doesn't have that sort of jagged plastic finish on the handle. So overall holding it, it's not bad. But what I mean is just in terms of the finish, in terms of the weight, it definitely feels a little bit cheaper than some of the other budget options that I have tried. But otherwise it's very simple. It sits on the stand just like so. I have a gooseneck spout. This spout in particular actually feels quite skinny. So we will have to see how the flow rate feels like. All right, just like with the other kettle videos, I'm going to go ahead and fill this up and we are first gonna compare the speed at which the water boils and then we are going to test out the accuracy of the actual temperature hold and of course give my initial impression on the overall handling of the kettle. I'll be right back. All right guys, so I went ahead and filled up both of these kettles with water. Obviously I'm still using the EKG as a benchmark right over here. Let me go ahead and replace the cover. Now, one thing that is pretty nice about this particular kettle is that these buttons down here are actually touch sensitive. Uh, I actually thought that they were a physical button. They definitely look like physical button, but it's kind of nice to see that it is touch sensitive. Now to operate the unit is definitely not as intuitive as I would like. You can toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit by holding the temperature button over here. You will see that it says Celsius and hold it again. It will go back to Fahrenheit. And the symbols on the bottom is not very self-explanatory. The one next to the power button is basically the boil button. Right next to it is the keep warm, followed by the plus minus. Of course, you know, that's to adjust the temperature. Then lastly, 
all the way on the left side, this is actually the button that you want to press if you want to sort of start in a target temperature boil mode. I don't know, you know, it's not the most intuitive thing. It's not the most, I guess, self-explanatory thing. But for most people that gets this kettle, I think you will get used to this operation sooner rather than later. So anyways, so we're going to go ahead and start off both of these kettles and first of all, see how long it takes to reach our target temperature. I'm gonna have my timer right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the fellow EKG, set the temperature to 205. We're gonna press this and set the target temperature also to 205, obviously press that. It's gonna have a double beep, which signals that this kettle is starting to boil the water. And of course we're gonna start the timer. It is a delayed start, but it definitely seems the temperature over here is a little bit um, jumpy to, you know, right off the bat because they started off around like 68. Uh, the fellow EKG was around 77, I believe. And now it's definitely catching up. Once again, both of these kettles reaches target temperature more or less around the same time. The EKG's time is as expected. I'm usually seeing this reaching my desired temperature in approximately five to six minutes, which is normal. And this one pretty much reached the targeted temperature around the same time. Of course, now the EKG is automatically already in hold mode. And in the case of this particular kettle, you have to press the keep warm button. I believe you have to do this. Uh, 205 and then now both of these are flashing so right so basically now it's in its uh, temperature hold mode all right so let me just go ahead and make sure that both of these are uh, 205 over here on the display and 204 on this one now what i do notice with most of these budget options is that the way that it sort of try to hold the temperature is never as accurate and it's never as efficient i should say as the ekg the ekg is really good at holding its temperature within that one degree Whereas most of these uh, will allow the temperature to drop a little bit further and then the coil is going to kick back in and try to bring it up to temperature. Now this one seems to be a bit more aggressive. Just by the number displayed on this particular display, it looked like it kind of allowed the temperature to drop all the way down to just below 200 and then all of a sudden it kicks on to almost full power, brings it all the way up and now it's holding it. So I guess all of these brands sort of program their coils to behave a little bit differently. But what's more important that I want to know is how accurate are these display temperatures. EKG has always been very good at showing the temperature that is currently in the kettle. So let me go ahead and test this out. I actually have just purchased a new temperature probe. These are oven probes. For the overwear video, which was shot a day ahead of this one, I didn't receive these yet, but now I finally have these. Hopefully this is going to be a bit more uh, accurate and easy to read than the other one that I kind of broke. Just to make sure both of these are reading the same temperature. So currently the room temperature is I, it's around 81 degrees and both of these are reading 81. Just for you guys to take a look. All right, so I actually had to do a take two on that because I set the wrong target temperature on the thermal probe here. So the alarm kind of went off. I didn't like that. So I'm just redoing this part. So first of all, I'm, let me just show you guys that both of these are showing the same temperature. I'm holding it in my hand. As you can see, they are reading uh, more or less the same temperature in my hand, just to... All right, so the number one probe I'm going to be putting in the JQ, JQ, and number two I'm putting in the EKG. All right, so quite interestingly, this kettle, as opposed to most of the other kettles that I have tested, uh, that usually falls short of its display temperature, this one is actually over. So as with these kettles, once you open the lid, you, uh, we do lose a little bit of temperature, so it's normal in this case. The fellow EKG is showing 205 on here and it's showing 203. Uh, actually 204, 205, this is showing 203 in the kettle because we have the lid open, so it's normal to see that. And in this particular case, we're actually seeing around like 205, 207. So this temperature might be one or two degrees uh, over uh, what is actually stated on the display. So that is definitely something interesting to see because you know most of the other kettles actually are cooler uh, on the inside than what is stated on the display. So with that said, the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and test the flow rate on both of these kettles just to get a feel. Again, as a comparison, this is the fellow EKG. Uh, as we know, it's more or less a restricted uh, flow scenario. And next we're gonna check out uh, today's kettle. 
Yeah, definitely. Even though the spout itself, it looks very, very skinny. However, the flow rate is definitely still very, very fast. As you can see how far out I can pull this. In terms of trying to do slower pours, I feel like this is probably a little bit harder to control the flow rate off. I would just have to test this out on a actual pullover over the next several weeks to see if I can actually get used to sort of controlling it this way. It's still showing that it's 205 on the inside. Not sure how accurate that is because usually, as you can see with the EKG, usually after you remove it, it'll you know more or less lose one or two degrees and it's going to quickly bring it back up. This, the coil didn't kick in at all after I've made all of these pours. I guess I can give it a test. Okay, I went ahead and dumped out the water. So let's pour some more water out of this right now. And then we are gonna read the temperature with the probe. Okay, so the probe is reading that the internal temperature is currently 196. Again, this is the probe number two. So once we put it on the stand, it's still showing 205, but the coil just kicked in. All right, so it boiled the water. So now the temperature have raised a little bit and a little bit more to 203. So it's almost like a, a stepped. So it goes like a couple of degrees at a time. It kicked back in one more time just now. So now it's 205. All right, so pretty interesting. So in terms of actual temperature maintenance, I think this one actually managed pretty well, you know, especially when compared to the overwear that we showed in the previous video and some of the other ones that I've tried, this one actually manages the temperature pretty accurately, which I'm pretty impressed by. All right, next, so let's talk about just overall the handling. There's nothing too special about the handling of this particular kettle. It just feels very, very light in the hand. In terms of ergonomics, it's not horrible, but definitely I feel like the way the water pours, it does tend to shoot out a lot further. It definitely seems like a better kettle for tea, but in terms of for pullovers, it's a little bit hard to try to, you know, to ensure that the water flows out as evenly as possible. Though, like I said, I'll test it out to see if I'll get used to the flow rate on this spout. And of course, like I said in the beginning of the video, the handle is very, very much plastic. The plastic actually runs all the way down here along the side of the kettle. One good thing is that it's very, very good at isolating heat. So holding it is definitely not of any concern. Obviously, again, comparing to the fellow EKG, this is definitely much more premium feeling. And of course, it comes at a premium price as well. So overall, as a first impression, I am impressed by the temperature management function of this particular kettle. It seems much more accurate than the rest, and it actually brings up to temperature fairly quickly, even though it doesn't show current kettle temperature that accurately for some weird reason. But based on the probe readings, it does seem to be doing its job. However, the overall build quality and the feel of the kettle is definitely on the cheaper side of the bunch. And one more thing to add regarding this particular kettle is that the temperature hold mode will last for one hour, which should be plenty of time. And of course, if it does run out of time for whatever reason, you can always turn it back on. All right guys, so this has been the unboxing and the first impression of the Jaku electric kettle. So I'll be testing out all four of these budget kettles over the next four weeks. And at the end, I'll give you guys a head to head, but I'm posting these unboxings and first impressions separately so that it will be much easier for you guys to reference to just in case if you guys are shopping or looking at this particular kettle. So anyways, hopefully you guys have found this to be helpful. As always, if you are new here, please do take a moment and subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, of course, share this video with anybody who might find it to be helpful. And as always, please take care and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.